What's going on Skid? We got a call today about an AC unit that's not turning off when it reaches the set temp. When I showed up it was originally it was originally in heat when I got here. I'm the one who put it over in the cool because I want to check the refrigerant and it's hot outside now. But uh, here in North Florida around this time of year it's cold at night so she originally had it in heat and she said a few weeks ago she put in a work order about it and Someone said it checked out okay and she had it in heat mode then as well. So something's going on in heat. So we'll see. The inside is running. And she said it's not shutting off when it reaches set temp. Filter's good. In heat mode, so. I'm gonna go outside and see what's going on. Again, I'm the one who put it in cool just to check the refrigerant levels because when the refrigerant levels low usually it'll do that it'll get close but it won't shut off when it, when it gets to a uh, set temperature I'll go outside yeah so this is the unit here and when I came out here I heard it going burr, just buzzing nothing was turning the fan wasn't turning and the compressor sound like it was trying to fire up but it wasn't just making a buzzing noise burr. so I went ahead and pulled the disconnect just yoked it on out of there I think we're gonna have a bag capacitor. I'm gonna take the cover off and check. And the power is off. Pulled the disconnect. I'll check anyway. With my meter. Well, this thing squeezed on tight. Weld this, uh, weld this thing on. Anyway, make sure power is dead. Yep, it's dead. Safe to work. You know, a lot of guys ask me, what's the first thing you do when you step up to a unit? Well, the first thing I do is I take a step back. All right, and then I'll take a step forward. Then I'll take another step back, and then a step forward, step back. Next thing I know, I'm cha cha and over by the unit. So we got a dead lizard on the capacitor. Since it was buzzing, I bet we're going to have a bad capacitor. It was doing the old brrrr. fan wasn't turning. And I know, I know the last thing YouTube needs is another capacitor video, but it's the first one of the season, Skid. I gotta get it on camera. A lot of new subscribers, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't, they don't know how to do a capacitor yet. I can just hear everybody groaning, oh, another capacitor video. Last thing YouTube needs. I'm sure the wildlife on top of it didn't help. A couple of little things. Could you imagine the story that they told when they got to the pearly gates? What happened to you? Oh, I was rooting around a condensing unit and accidentally tripped on the capacitor. All right, all you veterans can fast forward or just click off the video. I'll do this for the new guys who just came aboard. This is a 40 slash five capacitor, 40 slash five microfarad, so. C to Herm should say 40, and then C to Fan should say 5. I got it marked on top. It's a common Herm Fan. So we'll grab the old meter. My meter has the cap setting for capacitor, but a lot of other meters have MFD for microfarads, like fill piece and all that. So here we go. Common to Fan should say 5 on my meter. No, that's way low. 0 0.2. And then common to Herm should say 40. 1.59. Extremely low, so that's why I was doing the old 
condenser wasn't coming off. This is a heat pump, so it has to use the condenser. So I'm just gonna put in a new cap, 40 slash five, same as what came out of there. The new one is in yellow wire to Herm. Your wire colors may be different depending on what kind of unit you got. But all these good ones is pretty uniform. Yellow to Herm, brown to Fan, and purple and red go to Common. Dated 40 slash 5 because I had to turn it to get the wires on there and you can't see the microfarad. So here we go. Come on, big money, no whammy. Oh yeah. Wasn't doing that when I showed up on the call. I can hear the compressor too. I'm gonna check the refrigerant just to make sure. All right, 64 degree line temp. Suction line, 64 minus uh, roughly 44 degree saturation equals a 20 degree superheat. So I'm gonna let it ride. I'm cool with that for now. It's about 75 degrees out here. We haven't hit the peak season yet, so I'm just gonna let it roll. I'll take 20. Not a big load in the apartment. Yeah, it's slowly dropping too, so the charge is good. I'm comfortable with that. I can walk away confidently. This is my my quick hit and run gauges here. I use the, the digitals when I gotta get in depth. I'm gonna have to put in a new coil or install a new condenser. I'll break out the digis. But when I wanna do a hit and run, this is my Gorilla, Gorilla gear, get in and out. All right, I think they're gonna be good to go here. All right, here's my hypothesis. Here's my hypothesis. Uh, well, she had it on heat. The outside unit wasn't coming on, so it was just working on the heat strips. That's all that was giving her heat. The, the outside unit's got to come on for it to give her some good heat, so it wasn't shutting off when it satisfied, or when it got, or when it got to the set temperature, that is. So that's what the deal was. The condenser wasn't giving it that extra push she needed because the capacitor was bad. So, All right, guys, I'm going to get into some more advanced stuff as the summer approaches, I promise. I know the last thing we need is another capacitor video. It's the first one of the season, so I had to record it. And everything looked good in, in, the, uh, in the air handler, you know. That capacitor was the original capacitor from nine years ago, so everything looked good. I'm not going to overthink it. Not yet, anyway. Now, if the new one goes bad, then I'll dig deeper. But as a nine-year-old capacitor, as an old capacitor, old capacitors crap their pants. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Late.